It has been said that God does nothing on the earth unless some man or woman ask him. Why is that? God has given man dominion on the earth, and so he will not undermine the very authority that he has given out. Greetings. Welcome back to my devotion. Grace and peace be with you. This is a two-part series of this lesson, and the topic is, Why Pray? My first scripture reading will be taken from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, and it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Although God has given man dominion, he yet has given man the ability to recognize when something is beyond his ability. At which time man is to ask God to come in and move in and upon situation on our behalf, our power, Authority and dominion must be rooted in God. We must trust God to lead us and guide us. In prayer, we are afforded the opportunity to communicate with the living God who knows all things and can give us the direction that we need to live successfully. In prayer, we also find out the whys and the why nots, the hows and the winds as we pray and submit to God revelations to us. We will gain understanding regarding what he is doing and desire to do above the desire of our own flesh, which will cause us to make wrong choices. Submission in prayer causes us to step into God's perfect will in any given situation. Some, some of us pray too little and complain so much about the issues that they are having. This makes no sense. The issues will never change unless we pray. We have the tools to change our lives, and the greatest of which is to be able to access God in heaven because of Jesus' sacrificial death for us. Once we reach God in faith, that is to say, once God hears us, then we get an answer. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. You often hear people say after they have tried everything else, well, all we can do now is pray. If we would only pray first and stop making it the last thing that we do, we would soon find that things would turn around faster. Prayer requires faith in which we must be willing to believe. There are very little of us who are members of churches who truly know the value of prayer and make prayer a true priority. Most are involved with things that give them natural satisfaction, never grasping the true impact of prayer. It's not someone else's responsibility. 
it's not just the pastor's responsibility to pray for you and situation that you see and encounter. It is not just your mother, your father, or your grandparents' responsibility to pray for you and your circumstances. It is not just the church intercessors or prayer warrior responsibilities to pray for you, the church, the community, etc. Prayer is the responsibility and burden of everyone who is a Christian. You have been given spiritual responsibilities and authority in some places and are over some people, yet it requires you to pray in order for you to know what you must do. How great an impact would have on our families, churches, communities, cities, and nations if Christian, you and I prayed more. Prayer truly changes things. We must take on the responsibility to pray. Not only should we pray a little, but constantly, for it is our responsibility to bring things to the Lord so that he can move on the situation. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Although we should have dedicated times of prayer, we should also be constant in prayer throughout our days, causing us to be instruments in the hands of God that can be used for his glory at all times. The value of prayer, believing prayer, is something that mature Christians understand. While it is at the same time undervalued by the baby and adolescent Christian, the mature Christian understands their responsibility to pray and the great impact that it causes. Yet they also have crucified their flesh that resists the need to pray for the comforts of natural things and easy living. It takes discipline to settle yourself, move distractions and other natural responsibilities into a secondary place in order to make prayer primary in your life. This is something that you must choose to do. Staying connected to God. Prayer requires the establishment of relationship in which this generation does not want. Prayer builds a relationship with God and keeps us connected at all times. In the Lord's Prayer, it details the words daily bread. It is in daily regular prayer that we get the sustenance and direction we need. It keeps us connected to God by first praising God and then asking for forgiveness and other things. Thus moving any impedances to us reaching God. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 15, give us the Lord's Prayer, which says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It is in prayer daily and throughout each day that we stay connected to God and learn to discern his voice above all of the other voices that are trying to gain our ears attention. As Christian, we often ask God to use us. Yet when he unctions us to pray, we do not. One of the greatest ways to be used by God is in prayer. Most think that being used by God is some outward opportunity wherein people get a chance to see our gifts and talents. 
That is not it at all. God wants to use us in ways that we nor anyone gets the glory. And prayer is one of the best ways to do that. Thank you for listening. I hope you have been blessed. Please stay tuned for part two. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Have yourself a great, wonderful, and productive day. Peace.